you've been here before, Will. Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, my goodness, we both have our voices back. We barely survived WrestleMania, and Tony Khan is barely keeping his company alive. So we're going to give you a full recap of WrestleMania from our point of view. Surprise, surprise, AEW has some sort of thing called a Dynasty pay-per-view that we have to also look into. Oh, yeah, and John Moxley won the IWGP Heavyweight Championship over the weekend. <laughs> It's a weird time Yay. in pro wrestling, and I say pro wrestling because sports entertainment is dead for the better. <laughs> so it's episode 372, Dynasty Roads, here on Kings of the Rings Podcast, exclusively here on Wrestle Addict Radio, and it starts right now. I don't know what to tell you folks, but that may have been the greatest WrestleMania experience I have ever had. And I saw the Hardys return. Okay. Dave didn't see it, but I saw it. Holy <laughs> shit, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode 372, Dynasty Roads, the first episode of the new era of all of pro wrestling because sports entertainment is officially dead and boy did it go out in such a fantastic fashion if you like what you're listening to or what you're or what if you're watching us right now please like share subscribe leave us five star reviews buy some merch from us join our discord links to all of that are in the description below with me today in the new era of kings of the rings podcast is some old friends obviously the trio is back together probably on a more permanent basis now uh my traveling partner all the way to philadelphia and back, Mr. Will Tarasak, are you? I'm excellent. My voice officially came back 100% yesterday. <laughs> that was Monday, April 15th, tax day. That is how good WrestleMania was. I couldn't talk <laughs> like a full week. I go into work Wednesday morning, and they're like, hey, Will, how was it? Like, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, it was just like, my, my boss goes, Will, you sick? I go, no, I had too much fun. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, it's it's good to be back. And you know what? Shout out to Charles. Absolutely. Uh, Charles Charles was also a phenomenal um, travel partner. And I'm very happy I can now call Charles a good friend of mine <laughs> because that was a hell of a weekend. Yes, it with the was. Hell of a yes, it was. With us also as well. Back again for the very first time. Two episodes in a row. I'm so proud of you, kayfabe. <laughs> You are here replacing Rhea Ripley and Judgment Day based on your background. Kayfabe, how are you? Hi, hi, hi. Um, it is dinner time. <laughs> and Great I rhyme. am thank you, thank you. And I am the new leader of the Judgment Day. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yes, yes, that is that is all good things. And Kayfabe, while you might be the new leader of the Judgment Day, I am the proud owner of Europe now. I have now Ooh. I, I went to Philadelphia and I bought Europe, apparently. So this is number, I believe this is number nine in the collection now. Oh, l let me let me get what I bought. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, this is going to be interesting. I don't even know you can flip I'm that all on camera. I'm wearing what you all brought home for me. <laughs> <clears throat> You're welcome. Well, I don't think I told you this, but uh, you're about to see it in a couple of moments. Uh, Kay, Will pull the Dave. No, Jim. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. What? What are I you said saying? You pulled a Dave. Pulled a Dave. I did pull a Dave. So <laughs> let's see if it. I'm gonna ask Kay. So this bad boy right here. No, is... you fucking didn't. Yes, he I did. did. Oh. I did. Be Becky Lynch holding up both belts, signed and a piece of the canvas. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. I almost ordered that. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, what number are you? Are you a thirty-three? This is number 33 of 99. That's really so K, cool. Okay, guess how much this bad boy cost? $200. On the dot. Oh, yeah, because you looked it up. <laughs> no, I, no, no, right. no, no, no. 
Not that one. They're selling the canvas on the shop, like, not signed or anything. I'm still on the fence about buying it. But I did. Yeah, I, I, I straight up I straight up pulled a Dave. Because we. what happened was um, we got in Thursday night. We had our dinner. And we are like, we have no water. Like, we're really thirsty. Yeah, like, so we, 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 we spent we, the we whole found... day. It was like, we have nothing to drink in the house. <laughs> we have no liquids. So Wait a we, we minute. Did to... you guys not plan a grocery risk before you got there? Oh, absolutely not. We didn't. No, we don't Why? really need one, to be honest. We, we just need a liquid. Yeah. Uh, because Also because Reading Terminal is right next door, so there's our groceries. That's true. Um, we almost you bought ribs. Plan. We almost bought a few pounds of ribs. We did almost buy a few <laughs> pounds of ribs because we had an oven. <laughs> yeah, but that, anyway, anyway, um, so we're going to 7-Eleven to go get water, and we walk by the convention center, and there's a sign that says the superstore is open until midnight. Yeah, yeah. So we all look at each other and just go... After 7 11. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, so we we go back. It's like 11 o'clock at night. There's like no one. There's probably like 100 people there in the whole superstore, including yeah. staff. Oh, so wow. it was it was empty. Quiet. And the superstore is really, really cool. So I was looking at all the Fanatics things and like $800, no. $500, no. no $400. No. That's that's not even, that's like, that's LA night, no. not at a big <laughs> port. No. And then I, I, see, I see Becky and Bianca. Um, the other one was Bianca, I forget what venue, holding up a title, signed in a piece of the apron, maybe SummerSlam. Mm. And that was 250 And I look at Becky Lynch, and I go, okay, I was there. That's the last WrestleMania I was at. It's historic. It's actually signed. It's from Fanatics. It's legit. And within five, ten years, I'll sell it for triple what it's worth. So I bought it. I love no that. No regrets. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was an absolute lot of. And I got and I got more money. I, I literally just signed a new client for Lee Productions. So <laughs> I got like I got more than enough money to cover that coming in in a few weeks. Yeah. So I'm all. Yeah, good. no. So- I also I also ordered during WrestleMania weekend. I found on eBay the hat from Mania 35. Wow. Because I regret not getting it. I have a Mania 35 I hat Mania. I could have given you. Well, I wouldn't ask for your merch, you but like I don't know. I um. I like love hats. I have a whole wall of hats in my apartment, and I like have like no wrestling hats. I have an AEW like I have like the like the fucking like the flat brim, Mm -hmm. and that's like not I like it's fine, but like I don't like those anymore. Oh, like it's not 2010, and I don't. It doesn't fit my head right. Yeah, your curved brim I think looks better for you. I agree. Yeah. So so I saw. I saw the WrestleMania one on eBay, and I'm like, okay, I need it. So now going forward, I think whenever I go to a WrestleMania, or I don't know if I want to do Big Fours or just Manias, but I want to get a hat. Fair enough. I mean, mm. we get skulls. Like, I have my skull Yeah, I Yeah, mean, Ricky and I bought our nice skull. skull. Good. Yes. Yeah, I, I come home, Jazz is like, another one? I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, my, it's my WrestleMania skull. What do you mean? Yeah, a skull. She's like, where are you going to put it? Like, oh, right, right, right next, next to the, the other, other ones, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this I, I it's like my might as well. It's a member of every so it's when I'm old and I have dementia, I'm gonna remember what WrestleMania yeah, I went to. Because it's, yeah, it's on I'm the like, back, it I'm tells you WrestleMania t-shirts. exactly. Mm. I'm like so sick yeah. of getting shirts. I got three shirts. I bought no I shirts. Bought three shirts. Zero yeah. shirts. The best thing they had at the store sold out really quickly, and Charles got it. It was the Mitchell and Ness WrestleMania hoodie. Mm. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, that, it looks really yeah. nice, gorgeous, gorgeous. It was like one hundred twenty-five dollars, though. And I was like, Ooh, oh, no. yeah. <laughs> I I chose Becky Lynch on a on a fucking picture instead. Yeah, no, it was great. Also, Kay, like I I really only bought it because we were there at eleven o'clock at night. If we went there the next day, oh no, and it was packed, I had to carry that shit around. That's absolutely true. Not. I would have so, I would have dropped yeah, it. The positive it was like a right for place, us, right time situation. Yeah, the positive exactly. for us was that we were literally on the same side of the street as the convention center, and we were a block down. Oh, yeah. that's great. Yeah, Ricky picks the best neighborhood for us to be in. Like, not even close. yeah, we were in Chinatown. <laughs> it's yeah, that's awesome. Blocks. It was incredible. Shout out town I mean, and center I, I, city. Again, Philly's Philly's great. All people like to like that shit on Philly, but I've never had a bad experience in Philadelphia. Yeah, no, it was it was a great time. Except the subway. I did not like the subway. Yeah, it's, it's, plus the subway closed at midnight. That was the problem. Oh. Yeah, but it was also very yeah, we scary. Went, we These went guys were smoking cigarettes down, on the we subway. Went the what Hall is it like versus the New York subway? Quicker. Worse. <laughs> Worse how? So, like, you know how, like, the A train was, like, built in the 80s and it's mm-hmm. still there from the 80s? That's all of their trains, but scarier and dirtier. <laughs> They're a little older, yeah. 
Yeah, older. It was really yeah. funny. There no, were some I people out of town like that it. were just like, where do we go? And I'm like, I can read this map really easy. It's like, just go follow this all the way down. Like, yeah, how do you know yeah, about it? I was like, I'm from New York, dude. Like, this is this is child's play to me. Yeah, yeah, I, I, can, I can read a map. That's, <laughs> that's how I felt when I went to Chicago, too. Like, <clears throat> it was so easy, but the like, cleaner. Yeah. On the L? Mm-hmm. Makes sense. So, yeah. So, you know, WrestleMania was crazy. By the way, well, we got a good review from the uh, from the Airbnb guy. He really liked it. He said we left it, like, very clean. Oh, yeah, good. So he, yeah, his, he, his, his place was not that hard. It was pretty hard to break yeah, shit he, if you really wanted he was, to. <laughs> he's welcoming us back. <laughs> so whatever would have uh, You, sh- you should have told him, hey, man, sorry about your YouTube algorithm. <laughs> Yeah, someone Why? Ha- what did you guys watch? So the, he had a smart TV, obviously, and whoever mm-hmm. was signed on it also had YouTube Premium. <laughs> and they were just oh. left it signed in. I don't know if it was somebody who stayed there before us, but it was still signed in. So we we're like, we're going to screw up this algorithm so badly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The first thing I put on, because Charles is just like, well, put something on. I'm like, all right. So I'm just scrolling through random guys on YouTube. It was, uh, I forget the name of the video game. It was game, real something. But it was, it was real. No, it was wheel something. Wheel, happy, happy wheels. wheels. Yes, happy wheels. What the fuck is so happy a, wheels? Look it up. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you this video. Okay. I, it's 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 22 <laughs> hours long, <laughs> but but what? I promise you, you can make it to the end. <laughs> no, I can't. We made, it, we made it 45 minutes before we left for 7-Eleven. <laughs> so we put we left, we it, left on. it on. We went to 7-Eleven. We left it on. We came back, dropped our stuff off. Went to the superstore, left it on. It was still going. And it's YouTube uh-huh. Premium. It was YouTube Premium, no so there's no commercials, oh, <laughs> no God. ad break. It was so so funny. Um, but no, Philly was a great time. I still haven't tried that liquor you guys got for me, but I'll, I'll I will. Let what some kind go. of liquor did you get? So they went to the liquor store. Uh, Charles and I went to the liquor store. Uh, because Charles wanted some of the pregame went before night two. And I was like, give me a bottle of wine because I can down a bottle of wine during a pregame. Uh, and that's what I did. Oh, I chuckled when you texted me and you're like, I just drank a bottle of wine. I'm like, yes. <laughs> the mayhem will ensue. Um, and it and it did because we've already talked about that. Um, but, mm. but and then so I was Charles was like, okay. So he's like, he's like, I got you this bottle of wine and I also got you this as well. I go, what the fuck is this? He goes, trust me. <laughs> You'll like it. So all of the liquor store in Reading Terminal Market that they went to, it's all locally made liquors and was a beer Ooh. too. Oh, that's uh, no cool. beer. So it was all no locally beer. made liquors. So what they got me was this whiskey vodka infused liquor that tastes like apples. Like apple juice. Okay. They they taste they taste tested it, so I trust them. I just haven't opened it yet. Okay. Yeah. It well, is really sh- good. They gave us they gave us samples. It was really, really good. <laughs> try it now. I'm not gonna try it now. It requires me to open it up. Mm. I also have things to do tomorrow. Kind of. I'm like work. It's definitely not <laughs> watching AEW, but we're gonna talk about that in a bit. <laughs> but let's let's go. Let's 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 pivot. We can talk about the random crap we did around Philly, which is mostly just wrestling all day. Let's talk about WrestleMania weekend in and of itself. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> It, it gets the applause. Yeah. Break. I thought yeah. Mini was fucking incredible. So, by the numbers that I can rattle off the top of my head, over 200,000 tickets sold for the entire weekend, by the way. The largest SmackDown gate in crowd ever, I believe. The largest Raw, the largest overall TV gate that they ever had for Raw, and the largest Raw gate ever. Um, over WrestleMania itself. Over a billion views on Peacock. Okay. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Did you say a billion views? It's the most viewed thing on in, in the history of Peacock. Wow. WrestleMania literally destroyed social media. There, I, I watched a girl on TikTok saying, I've never seen wrestling ever, but I saw everybody's reaction to the end of WrestleMania, and now I'm intrigued. She's like, I don't know what's going on, but I want to learn everything. So much that The Undertaker responded to her. Wow. (laughs) Damn. Yeah. Yeah. It is absurd the amount of things that went on during WrestleMania weekend. Uh, Absolutely blown away. Stephanie McMahon's back. 
Okay. I'm so happy <laughs> yeah. to see Steph Me back. Me too. I'm so happy. So I, I can go I'm on and shocked. on. I can go on and on, but well, what was it for you? Tell me about what was your WrestleMania experience like, just in a nutshell, before we like start breaking it down. God, I, I'm going to pull a rock right now and just go goosebumps. <laughs> like, literally, I have fucking goosebumps right now. I was thinking about that two one billion peacock streams. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, I'll put it this way. I lost my voice after Paul Heyman said fuck the first yeah, time. We all did. <laughs> so that that was it. My voice was gone. We had four and a half shows left after that. <laughs> like we had five, four, four and four and a half, five full shows. <laughs> Paul Heyman went out first. So yeah, the weekend was absolutely insane. Like WWE did such a good job of you know, the term community is so overused and cliched nowadays, but they did a really good job of bringing the wrestling community all in one place because everywhere we went, we saw wrestling fans. The wrestling yeah. store with all that old stuff, we actually went yes. there. Yes, Suplex Vintage um, Wrestling, amazing. Yeah, literally the comic book store ne place next door was had like videotapes of the 1990s wrestling yeah. on. So everywhere we went, it was wrestling. And it was just like, man, this is why I love this shit. Because it's just, it's such like a different thing compared to anything else. Like I, I can imagine Super Bowl week being pretty cool, but like nothing compared to the wrestling fandom and community of how fucking crazy everything yeah, is. We, it was amazing. Yeah, Will and I, what do we do? We, bef before, after NXT, we ran into some random dudes. He, they like, some of these, 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 these four guys from Maryland, as we're trying to get closer to the stadium, it's like, hey, let me ask you a question. Shawn Michaels or HBK? We talked for a half hour. <laughs> yeah. talked for a half hour it was yeah they're really, good guys. really fun guys college yeah. kids college kids from uh from maryland um just absolutely nuts we fucking uh we we had a conversation with top dollar for like 10 minutes oh that's oh. cool <laughs> oh, okay okay remind me to tell you in the post show what i learned from top dollar oh yeah i know this story yeah we we ran into izzy i showed you my izzy friendship bracelet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, there's mine. <laughs> I had to explain to Jazz who Izzy was, and she was like, oh. uh, <laughs> like what? <laughs> like, she, she's like, that's confusing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We uh Charles got a picture with the Godfather. He was really happy about that. <laughs> yeah, when Godfather was like, Oh hey, big man, I was like, Oh my god. <laughs> I looked up and I'm like, oh my god, Charles is really <laughs> No, it's a crazy time, but but Kayfabe, what was your WrestleMania weekend? You weren't there with us, but how was it like for you at home? Okay, so this I know I texted post... you through like the main event of night two. Yeah, yeah. So I talked to everybody all weekend, <clears throat> but this year we hosted WrestleMania. Usually my friends host a party, but this year we decided we wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. So we hosted a party for night one. We made a lot of food with wrestling themed puns. Charcuterie flair. It was it was amazing. <laughs> we had, I loved every single one of them. Kay. We had a says. charcuterie flair. We had Monday night raw veggies. We had Undertaker tots. We had scone cold Steve Austin. We had D'Lo brownies. Um, a cowboy Bob Orton caviar like the guac. <laughs> nice we ate so good and like what you guys are saying about like how special like the wrestling community is like on the other like end of the spectrum is like we had such like a small intimate thing like two of my friends came over one of my friends don't even watch wrestling mm. they came just to like hang out with us but, but by the end of wrestlemania they were like they were like oh i hope cody finishes the story <laughs> like was committed and as to Sami Zayn, like, got very into it. Yeah. It's... Like, it was really, it's just such a magical experience. Like, there really is nothing like it. Like, I watch other sports, but it's not like this. It was loud. It was very loud. That... It was very, like, I think Raw, Raw at times seemed louder than WrestleMania. Because you're in a, I thought you're in that a, in, too. You're in, in close yeah. space. Yeah, you're in an arena, right? Because you're, in, you're, indoors. you're indoors. Yeah, and we we're close, and we we're close to the yeah. ceiling. But, it, it was everything was loud. SmackDown was loud. Hall of Fame was really loud. Yeah. My living room um, was loud. <laughs> NXT whoop that trick is like <laughs> I, I can't believe whoop that trick is like a chance of wrestling. Change. NXT it's, NXT stand deliver made Will an NXT fan again. Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it did make me go like fuck. I need to start watch. I'm not going to, but it made me go. I need to start watching. Well, because we're 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 streaming right now while they're, while they're on. 
Yeah, like it it was that good of an NXT show. It was very well put together. The matches were great. The characters were fun. No, I like Noam Dar now. No, Dar's the greatest. Really Noam Dar, no, no, Dar, Dar right? metaphor <laughs> were absolutely amazing. His, his faction. Metaphor, was, yeah. Like, he's Noam Dar yeah. and Alicia Fox were so funny. We walked past Alicia Fox at uh, WrestleCon. Oh, WrestleCon. really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, ev- everyone was doing, like, Rick, you mentioned it when um, Pretty Deadly was on screen. Like, this is a creative way to make sure everyone's on the card. Yeah, yeah, when they gave the preview yeah. of the tag teams. Like, it's, that's perfect. Yeah. Genius move. Yeah, and it is the same thing with metaphor. It's like everyone was used correctly. Yeah. It, well, except Chad Gable, but <laughs> 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 they made up for yes, that they one. Did. But yeah, I mean, it was, what more can we say, really? Yeah, no, it was crazy. So let, let's get into it. Uh we're not going to go through everything. Obviously, we're going to talk a little bit more stand and liver a little bit uh, later, but let's go through some of the highlights. First highlight we have to go through, Paul Heyman's unfiltered, uncensored, unplanned speech is a top two speech in the history of the Hall of Fame. I'll still take takers as I was there for takers, and that was unbelievable, but you can make a great argument for Paul Heyman's speech. That man... Yeah unloaded years of frustration in one speech. And I'm glad we were there to see it live because it must have been hell in the handbasket with all the censoring they had to do watching it on Peacock. Oh, my God. I don't even... I know there were some swears that were missed. Probably. (laughs) I think at least one fuck made it through the broadcast. That makes sense. (laughs) Can I say, though, like... I, like, haven't had a moment in wrestling in a while where I legit cried. Paul Heyman's sweet. I was sobbing. It was Yeah, it was when, he's, when he's talking to his kids. Oh, yeah, when he talked to his kids, like. It, and he's like, all right, let's, that other soppy shit is over. Let's have some fun. Yeah. Oh. I mean, to me, to me, like, this is, I, I said it when we were walking out. I'm like, I don't understand how Paul Heyman can. He turns to Trish and Stephanie. And for Stephanie McMahon. She he praises her husband while at the same time destroying her father. And she's smiling and clapping through it. It's like I don't know how Paul Heyman can do that, but he did it perfectly. Like it's it was just fucking wild. He's just a master of words. Yeah, he he said I'm a Paul Levesque guy till the day I die. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> you know, I was like, wow. Like, but I mean, it, when you look back at it now, it makes all the sense. Like, and you look at how the performers were this weekend compared to Mania's past and even television past, it seems like a giant weight. It seems like they're having a lot more fun. They all seem does. happy. Yeah. It does. It does sound like everyone's having fun. <clears throat> like, even Seamus, when he came back last night, as, you know, little little chunky as he can be, was like he was having the greatest time of his life. And he ca- uh, We saw that access, too. Like, anytime they were on the main stage. Mm-hmm. Um, like the the new day. Oh, when and, they did up up down like, downstream, yeah, they, yeah. They like when so they did the Slammies fun. and Seth Rollins's like speech. Like everyone out there seemed like the, the photograph line is kind of like, oh, let's kind of get this shit over with. Yeah, but that's because that's just just that 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 sucks. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't want to do that yeah. either. But like everyone seemed happy to be there. The, the Pat McAfee show was incredible. Michael Cole was having a time of his life. Oh my god, Michael Cole. I haven't yeah. watched Night Two yet, but Night One he was great. Michael Cold. Michael Cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Night one, he was great. Pat McAfee was great. Like, oh, just the the whole environment. I think my favorite thing when we're talking about even, I mean, we're going, we can talk about Paul in the Hall of Fame, but, but like, it kind of speaks for itself. But going into WWE world, which needs some work, it was a great, they need, it does. it does need some work. I'll tell you that. But I think one of my favorite things, I mean, it's watching the little kids do the entrances and all the fans like cheering for them. So yeah, can, that's sweet. Because you were at you you've been to Access. I remember with, that. I remember that at Access. It was really cute. Yeah. So they kept it, obviously. Um, and you, that's the first thing you see is everybody doing these entrances when they walk in. It's really dope. It is really, oh. really dope. Seeing all of Bray Wyatt's stuff, all the Firefly Funhouse sets. Charles still has to send us the uh, the head of a table picture. Yes, he does. <laughs> I had to get. I got to get on him for that. Yeah, and the fireflies in the uh, in the arena and the stadium. Every arena, yeah, was like it's such a crazy thing to see because I didn't really get to see it. See it at Mania thirty four. Thirty four so was it, yeah. He was briefly out there for the Andre Giant in the pre show, mm-hmm. but this was full blown 
everywhere in the stadium. Yeah, man. I have I have pictures of it. It's just it really is mesmerizing. Yeah. It's really cool. I'm glad we still do that as fans. Yeah, no, it was it was a crazy time. Let's go to the to the mania card a bit. We'll start off with I I turned to Will and said this what said this and it still holds up when I watch it again. Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch is a technical masterpiece. It it's was just incredible. really good wrestling. <laughs> it's literally just really good wrestling. Rhea had her um had it was called Motion and White come out, who apparently are from Pennsylvania. Motionless and white. Motionless and white, my apologies. Mm-hmm. Um what an awesome way to kick it off. Triple H kicking off a show. Uh but they like they set a such a great tone for the rest of the night. Like they pretty much almost had a flawless bout. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they did. <laughs> It was. So- it was. It wasn't. Wasn't that many crazy high spots? Like not many false finishes. There was just straight old. It felt like it felt like a, a, a nineteen eighties match. I'm like yeah, we're we're here to wrestle, and this is what we're yeah, going like to do. Yeah, like, like a savage, like a savage steamboat comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was great. And apparently, if you listen back to the show, Becky Lynch was suffering strep throat up the entire week of Mania. Yeah, she had like a fever or whatever too. She, she was yeah, she was sick. Yeah, she had a she fever of one hundred two and still put on a fucking banger. <laughs> of a yeah. match. And unfortunately, as we know, this past uh, yesterday, Rhea Ripley's injured and her 380 day reign as WWE Women's World Heavyweight Championship has come to an end at the hands of Liv Morgan, who is on her Liv Revenge tour, which I kind of enjoyed the character build up to this. Uh, one thing to note of Rhea Ripley getting injured before I pass it over to you. Uh, Kay, before I know you're going to go for the title and Judgment Day and all of that. It was a freak act. <laughs> it was a freak accident. It was an absolute freak accident. I looked at it. I looked at the footage. I looked at what she's injured with. I believe. I, I believe it was her AC joint. They said, and essentially, she pretty much broke her collarbone. Oh, yeah. Because when I when I saw her come out of this thing, I was like, oh, it's a collarbone. And then I saw when she got because she got shoved into the wall. And she wouldn't show the approach. And, like, that just, collarbones kind of happen. <laughs> like, that's the yeah. thing. I've seen people lose years of, like, a year of football just breaking their collarbone because it's it's a crap thing to to break. And it's really hard. It's a lot of rehab, It's really too. hard mm-hmm. to heal and everything. And I know a lot of people were complaining about Rhea being forced to vacate when you had Seth, who didn't have to vacate at all. Uh, it's a different. It, yeah. it's the the only it, argument it, is it, a different injury. A yeah, compared to it's a, bone. a bone. Yeah, very different. It's a bone. Very different. So Rhea's forced to relinquish. Um, very sad way to go. There's a video out of her crying in Triple H's arms after she relinquished on on stage and everything. Um, but but yeah, Mid Morgan is right to Kwan. She's <laughs> I she's. It. I can't wait to boo Liv Morgan. No, she's Liv's got not Liv Morgan's got something. I can see it. She has something here. But kayfabe, what are your thoughts on on Rhea? The highest of highs and the lowest of lows in, like, a week's time. Uh, obviously, I'm bummed. Just, like, Rhea and Becky, like, are my favorite women's wrestlers. Also, long-haired Rhea uh, is a problem. Like, Jesus, she's gorgeous. Oh, it's unfair. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, don't even get me started. <laughs> like, I, like, every week, I'm like, surely Rhea Ripley can't get hotter. Then she comes out with fucking extensions, bitch. Oh, And she's, she's prepping so for her hot. wedding, too. I think that's why, as well. And she's it's like not that way, make it push the broken yeah. collarbone. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely gonna get pushed back now. Yeah, um, but I'm gonna be real. I like don't see the Liv Morgan hype. Like, I don't believe it. I like, I know they're crowning, uh, they're crowning a women's champion on Raw next week, and like, I don't buy it like at all. Like. If if it hadn't been a freak fucking accident, no way Liv Morgan takes out Rhea Ripley. No, they were they were I'm building sorry. they were building to something big, and now it's going to be delayed a little bit. But I thought it was going to be Jade. Nah, it's not Jade yet. Um, you turn Liv heel immediately. No, Liv, Liv, Liv's definitely going heel right now. Yeah, you um, turn here. I mean, listen, she needs to step the fuck up right now. Like, she, she, I mean, she should get this belt. Honestly, I know it's like she shouldn't, but she totally should get this belt because one, who else is there? And two, you gotta strike while the iron's hot. Mm-hmm. So give it to her. We we is out what you think six months at least? Four to six, I think. Yeah. Four to six. So let's say let's say it's four. This or let's no, say it's six for the sake of argument. Yeah. Uh you'll have Liv going a good six month run, and then Rhea comes back as a massive baby face and just fucking destroys her. That's right. My 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 other choice is gonna be give it to Naya. 
Uh, no, absolutely fucking not. Give it to Naya. No. I, oh, that's not a bad choice. Either, give it though. to Naya. <laughs> give it to Naya. No thanks. Naya's putting in great think, work. I think, I mean, I, I would also love to see it on Naya. Mm-hmm. But if you give it to Naya, Liv has nothing to do. Yeah, that is the issue. It has to go to right? Liv. Like, if you're trying to make it, or like, you, if you, especially if it's a heel, the most heat you can get is taking someone out by injury and stealing. That is the definition of heat. Yeah, especially if it's a top guy. Especially if it's a top guy, right? Yeah, I, I, oof, I don't. It's it's going to be interesting how they do this uh, and everything. But hopefully, Reno Rhea gets better. Let's move on. Uh, next match on the card. It, it was a fast first day. Uh, you had the ladder match for for a, for me now un ununified tag team titles. You had a town down under winning. Yay, yay! L- watching this match back again. It's actually really fucking good. It's actually pretty good. I have a question. Yeah. How did the crowd react to A Town Down Under winning live? We we, we didn't care for it too much. We're like, oh yay, fuck those guys. Like it was, <laughs> that's pretty much what it I was. I thought it was a we I thought it was a weird choice. I don't. It depends on what they do. Like a lot of this is gonna be. You gotta give them. You gotta give them something, right? Yeah, you got. He's, try, he's trying to. He's trying to build two young stars. You gotta save theory. Okay. You gotta save theory is what it is. You, you gotta save theory, and you have something in Grayson Waller. <laughs> exactly. And man, listen you know, on SmackDown currently because all this can change in a, in a week from now because we are going to do a draft again, and the draft's going to be wildly different this year. Um, or no, the draft in real life is going to be wildly different because we've been doing the same thing for the past couple of years. But you have the potential of a mega douche group of Logan Paul, Austin Theory, and Grayson Waller all holding belts. Oh yeah, <laughs> that'll yeah. work. That'll work. Yeah, that, honestly, dude, that re- that's a good way to bring them back. Yeah, dude, I want to save Austin Theory. You're strapping to Logan Paul. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, but the- Logan is fucking so. <laughs> oh my god, he's so good. And he just announced <laughs> that he's having a child. That's a mistake. Is he really? <laughs> mistake. Yeah, he's not just quite his girlfriend. His fiance, excuse me, is pregnant. Which congratulations to them. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm like Logan, Bubby. You got a few Not more right years now. of debauchery. <laughs> right you, got, you got a few good more years before you turn thirty and really want to like you're settling down too early. I, I, I'm congratulations. I'm happy for you, but I feel really sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really, but the highlight of that tag match, obviously seeing DIY come out as DX as DXIY, which is great. Um, R- they should have called him DIX. DIX would have been hilarious, dude. <laughs> yeah. No, R Truth won his first ever WrestleMania match, I think, and title. At WrestleMania, which is wild to think about. Wasn't our truth the US so champion? Hard. No, winning a match at WrestleMania. Oh, and, and first title and WrestleMania. First title, first title, title period. First title okay. WrestleMania. No, he was okay, a US was champ. Okay. But his first title wrestling. That's why the Miz was if you watch the Miz, he's like ecstatic for him. Mm-hmm. No, it was a really it's a really wholesome moment. Act, I think you actually saw R Truth actually kind of break character a little bit at the end. Well, of course. Yeah. How do you not? Yeah, no, it was it was crazy, crazy to see. Um, and we now have we now have at least a set of new tag titles on Raw, the World Tag Titles. You guys see them? They look great. They're gorgeous. They're yeah, they look really great. nice. They they're say. really nice. I'm very excited to what we're obviously so they're going to do World and SmackDown's going to get the WWE Tag Titles. That's what I'm mm-hmm. assuming is going to happen. I'm interested to see what those WWE Tag Titles look like for for Waller. And theory, it's all gonna be a toss up uh, on, on Friday because he's gonna do a reveal. Clearly, uh, moving on, we had the we had all lucha things apparently as the six person tag or no, yes, no, it's two or two or six. Oh no, which was invaded by non lucha people uh, culturally appropriating Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson. It looked ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> They're giant white guys who are NFL linemen. Yeah, they're gonna look ridiculous. It was a good pop, though. It was fun. It was a good pop. It was just like, yeah, what, what do you guys like? Why, why the, why the Mexican match? Like, why the like, like the ladder match? It should have been somewhere else. Yeah, it but, really yeah, should like, have they been. Could, they could have been in the ladder match, I guess. <laughs> they should have been in Bloodline Rules. <laughs> just, just have them, just have them tackle God. people. Oh my God! Wait, <laughs> if Travis and Jason Kelsey came out during the Bloodline, no, definitely match, not Travis Kelsey. Up, like, I swear to God, not Travis Kelsey. You could get the Kelsey Bloodline versus. <laughs> That would be a, honestly that might have broken the internet for I'd, five I'd watch weeks. That. <laughs> yeah. I'd watch that. 
You could do the Paul get, brothers. But they get Taylor Swift to join them. Listen, I don't want that madness of Taylor Swift. You thought, I mean, the Philadelphia was wild during WrestleMania. Imagine if Taylor Swift was in the building, too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Imagine. Yeah, it would be absolutely an insane. The funny- Although, if Kelsey goes, Taylor, will, will you marry me? me? <laughs> oh my oh, god! Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, 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 it'd be worth it. <laughs> it'd be worth it. It'd be worth it. If that happened, I'd be like, "Yo!" I like. I would never chant yes louder. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be worth. It. But there were a bunch of other celebrities that showed up at Mania. Snoop Dogg, high as shit, obviously. He said the wrong number. <laughs> Vanessa. Same. Vanessa Hudgens was there. T Pain, no, it wasn't T Pain. It was Two Chains, right? Well, no, T T Pain was, no, was there. No, T Pain was there and phone. Two Chains. They were both there. T Pain, Two Chains, Wale, Drewski. I was like, wow, we are really doing like Celebrity Road. Drew Barrymore was backstage. Oh. L- L- Little Wayne performed his new single, A Millie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we almost had Paramore. They could, they didn't uh, get the deal done in time, unfortunately, because Paramore was supposed to do Bailey's uh, entrance. Next year. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. Yo, no, for real, if they do a mania in Nashville, that would be the year to get Paramore. Oh, yeah. They haven't announced it yet, which is very bizarre. There's something up. There's got to be something yeah. up. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah. But, I guess, I don't know, the summer. Probably at SummerSlam. Yeah, who, who the fuck knows? All right, so what else happened night one? There's a lot that happened night one. Um... But those are the highlights. The other thing that I think was really big, besides the you know, Lucha things and the stuff, obviously the main event, uh, the tag team match that was just a tornado tag. Because if you watch the playback, Rock says, "If you start, if you start doing a ten count, I will fucking fire you." Yeah, yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> it was great because I didn't know. Obviously, Rocky's mom was there, kind of like mm-hmm. chirping at Cody. Cody's mom was chirping at the rock. I was like, this is fucking great. The only gripe I have about that, it was so fucking slow in the beginning. Yeah, a little <laughs> a little too much stare downs. Yeah. And like slow moves and more stare downs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just a lot of slow movement stuff. Like, come on, guys, let's get it over with. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, I mean, they made up for it. They made up for it. But uh, Oh, no, they did. Yeah. It, it was like, yeah, Rock went through a table. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Rock went so, through. Crazy. Yeah, it was. He had he like he gave us more in that match than he did for two Cena matches. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, no, it was absolute time. And then the call that Michael Cole said, Cody screwed. <laughs> That's how he ended. Yeah, <laughs> Cody <It> is screwed. <laughs> Cody screwed. <laughs> this sucks, guys. No, Michael Cole sounded incredible all weekend. Oh, yeah. He was so happy. He was so happy to be there. Um, and then night one ended. And night one would have been better if it was warmer. Because when we move over to night two, I don't know if you noticed, Will, but there was a complete change in the atmosphere oh, yeah. of, the, oh, yeah. of the arena. Like, even when we rolled into parking, the parking attendant was like, all right, we got Cody tonight, right? We're going to do it, right? Like, everybody was hyped. I went to get a cheesesteak, had a 10-minute conversation about what do you think is going to happen tonight? Is Cody going to win it? But, like, the 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 vibe, the atmosphere, the feeling, it was, there was such a heightened level of emotion. And even from the beginning, like, I don't know who I, I was texting somebody. I was like, this crowd is aggressive tonight. And the crowd, what, it was visibly <laughs> noticeable. Yeah. Like, I was like, it, oh, it really this is was a weird kind of feeling like tonight. Check. Yeah. We're fucking ready. <laughs> yeah. You know why? Because we knew we knew Cody was gonna win. I think night one, when it was cold, and two were like, okay, we know what's gonna we know what's gonna happen. We're not we're not excited to see the rock win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was kind of it's like, all right. But then Sammy, we came alive for Sammy Zayn night one. That's the other one night one. I totally forgot about that. Sammy had the rocky moment of the weekend. Yeah. And we were hell bent on, I think. Because there were some guys in the parking lot asking about when we were going into SmackDown. And Will's like, Gooper's going to commit a hate crime on Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's going to be a hate crime. <laughs> but I totally believed it. Like, he got the hero's entrance. Kevin Owens was there randomly. He was like, hey, come on, get it done. I was like, he's going to die. He's going to die. He's going to die. And then he won. 
Yeah, out of the thing nowhere. Is, he he, he kind of he like he he fucked the ring and then he hulked up and won. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what is uh I like broke when Kevin when he when like he was walking down. A like, lot of people there. did. It yeah. was over. It was <laughs> over for me. Yeah. I was like, oh man, they're really gonna make this loss really hurt for us, aren't they? Dude, I was the yeah. opposite. I saw Kevin Owens hit him. I'm like, fuck, I should have picked Sam. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> yeah, no, it was oh man, that match. That match. I loved how his wife Khadijah like went up the gumper and was like, it's over for you. And like sat back down. I was like, I don't, I don't know what you said. I was like, Sammy looks like he's about to die, but all right. <laughs> I mean, that Gunther ending his reign at 666 days. That's a joke somewhere for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so, but good on Gunther. He let, he 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 goes off to the sun a little bit. He he deserves some time off until we get ready for Bash in Berlin. So yeah. That's all you need. That's all you need. Oh, I think it's Cody Gunther and Bash in Berlin. I agree. That's what oh I was yeah, the America, the Mister America versus like the King of Austria. Here's the King of Austria. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's like I ended one streak. I can end another. <laughs> I can end the war. That was also the scary thing. So, okay, were were you watched? You saw when they panned to Germany. Who was watching it when Gunther came out? Yes. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! They were so. Scary. I was so scared. <laughs> they were like ready for a blitzkrieg. <laughs> I was so Good scared. Time. I was like, "What is going on? What is going I've on?" Ne- like, I've watched. How people fast be angry can we mobilize? Wrestling before, <laughs> but I've never seen such angry happiness before. I was like, "He was like, this is kind of nuts." I felt like I like shouldn't like I was like intruding on watching them. <laughs> it's like they can't wait to be on the right side of the world war. <laughs> It was, just, it was very scary. I was like, I don't, I'm not comfortable with this at all. <laughs> Turn the camera off. Seriously. Oh, my well, like, God. Like, what basement were they in? I don't know. <laughs> I don't <laughs> they, know. they looked like they were in a bomb shelter. <laughs> I don't know at all. Oh, my God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, jeez. I'm, like, sweating now. Oh, <laughs> Oh my god. And then we move on tonight to again very aggressive crowd. Oh. And Stephanie comes out out of nowhere. No one saw this coming. With the hip hop remix of her song. Yeah, and she yeah, she remixed her own song. Um she did Triple H's Are You Ready really aggressively. So Stephanie's back. Triple H didn't really disclose what role she's in now, but she I don't think she knows what role she's in. She's just, just back. Yeah, no, good for her. It's a I think Will's, Will's like, come on, you didn't think there was going to be a McMahon somewhere in this company at some point? <laughs> yeah, dude, d- d- WWE does not exist though. McMahon. <laughs> this doesn't, this doesn't happen. Yeah. yeah. So Stephanie's back. Probably she'll probably fill in like some philanthropic stuff because that's what she was really good at. <laughs> she's on a Legends yeah, I, deal. Come on, let's go. I thought yeah. she was going to do like Connor's. Cure. My guess is she's going to do more of like the Connor's Cure type. She's thing. taking Tyson O'Neill's job. <laughs> 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 and so, and then we kicked off with. Um, was it America? It was God Bless America, but I forgot who the, the name of the the, the, oh, the duo. duo. Oh, they you know rocked they it. Were oh, they were... uh, the the Heart and the Fury, something, something like, like that. that something, yeah, like, something like that. They like were... I forget the woman's name who did Night One and Star Spangled Banner. Oh, it's, uh, like, she Coco was Jones. She's she plays Hillary in the new Fresh Prince. Yeah, like great, great voice. But Night Two, they just fucking brought hey, yeah, God they Save the God, God I was like, Jesus Christ. I was like, they had no business stealing the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, that's they, good. And then you had Drew come out to the classic uh, Irish Piper. theme, Piper's theme. Um, and then Seth Rollins with the, with the queer icon entrance of WrestleMania <laughs> with the Philadelphia Dude, commentary Mothers. Commentary hated it. <laughs> Commentary buried except Michael Cole. Michael Cole was loving it, but like because it was because uh, Phil Corey, was because CM Punk was on him. CM Punk was like yeah, Corey the War and Punk, Treaty. Yeah, uh, the War War and Treaty. War, oh, so good, mm. so good. Yeah, Punk buried that entrance like, <laughs> hard. hard. I was like, damn, Phil. And Punk came he, out as a surprise as the guest announcer. I was like, this is the yeah. crazy beginning of this. WrestleMania. That wasn't a surprise, though. They've been saying it. Yeah, yeah like, they announced it. Yeah, but still. Weeks. But it was still like a crazy beginning. I just like, oh, wh- and then 
Seth's entrance is just amazing. It's just, it's just amazing. They, they, there were so many people who took up the whole ramp and the full <laughs> round the ring. He, st- he literally stole Adam Rose's <laughs> um, entrance. Yeah, but made it, but made it way Made better. it more flamboyant. Okay, I know you were telling me about how you guys felt when Seth came out to the Mummers. So, like, Seth Rollins has been a queer icon in our household for quite some time now. And Seth Rollins has now made everyone else aware of that fact. <laughs> it was, <laughs> we've been literally for the last like year and change. We're like, Seth is a bisexual king. <laughs> Honestly, well, kind of, <laughs> pretty much. Yes. And then Becky in her suit, like. Oh, the suit with the quotes from her book. No, no, no. During, um, I think Mania, she during, I think either press for the book or press for Mania, she wore a suit. Ah. Gotcha, yeah, no. Interesting. It was crazy. And then the match started, and Seth got his head kicked in. <laughs> and I was like, oh, we're ending this early, aren't we? And then he kicked out, and they put on a fantastic match. And this was when we knew we were in for something crazy. Peak WWE storytelling. Drew beat Seth in a damn good match. Drew can't get over the fact that CM Punk is still around. He does a really suggestive crawl. <laughs> he does a really suggestive crawl on the announce table, which I won't get into. <laughs> and then he gets in Punk's face. And Punk just leg sweeps him. The classic leg sweep. <laughs> Takes off his brace, hits him in the head. And the bisexual Undertaker known as Damian Priest comes down and catches in. <laughs> Dude, that cash was nuts. We lost, lost it. it. Yeah. We lost it. I had no voice. Now it's like, well. <coughs> yeah. The best all part. All right. We were behind these two guys from the Bronx. Was, New Yorkers can't go anywhere without running into another New Yorker. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Honestly, you, got, you guys are like magnets. <laughs> and it's these two Hispanic guys from the Bronx. So, like, we all lost it together when Priest cashed in. Yeah, shout out to those guys. They were really they were funny. Fucking hysterical. Like, hey, they're, they're, they're <laughs> those are the kind of people who keep like yelling out, "No, he didn't!" Like this random shit. They're Statler and Waldo. That, that, oh, I love sitting with people <laughs> like that. But, but like most of the time, it gets annoying after like the third or fourth one. No, no, no. I, Every I single one like, hit. Yeah. Every I feel single like guys, one. <laughs> I feel like I see guys like that at AEW shows all the time. <laughs> yeah, no, they're definitely Statler, but they were awesome. Damian Priest. The first Puerto Rican champion in over 50 years. That's fucking crazy. The last one being, I believe, Pedro Morales. Yeah. Yeah. And they had a handful of Puerto Ricans come through there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they had like a lot. A lot. A lot. <laughs> like a lot. lot of Puerto Ricans. Yeah. Remember the Matadors? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those are the Puerto Colognes. Yeah. yeah. The Colognes. Yeah. <laughs> the Colognes. <laughs> They're the Colognes. The Matadors were the Colognes. And then it was good to see. I didn't think... Judgment Day could be a face, but then you had Rhea as champion, you had Priest as champion, and they they had they they all welcomed Priest at the top of the ramp. That was really cool to see. Oh my god, it was so that was cute. nice. Yeah, that was nice. If you see, there's backstage, but there's a lot of backstage footage that WWE released uh, for that Priest. Uh, Priest's father's there, classic Latin man in a suit and everything. His father's there. His brother's there. The Rock comes up to him and his family and congratulates him. The Undertaker. Comes up to Priest and congratulates uh, him and, like, shakes his father's hand and everything. Like, it is a wild scene. Uh, yeah, Damien Priest's story is nuts. Absolutely. Yeah, he was too. homeless yeah. 10 years ago. He was homeless 10 years ago. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that either. Crazy. Yeah, he was homeless 10 years ago. Formerly known as Punisher Martinez. He had a pretty, he had a wild following on the indies for a very, very long mm-hmm. time. Um, yeah. And now he's at the, he's at the top of the division, which is nuts. Um, and I should we should have seen this cash in coming. Because, like, no better time. But it was told so well because Drew McIntyre's uh, anger and pettiness got the best of him. And that was kind of a story of WrestleMania, that there are real consequences to every action you make. I loved it. I loved I loved this WrestleMania so much. It set the pace. Yeah. Long term, it's gonna be chaos. You're gonna scream, and the eat and the bad guy's a moron. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, I'm... like Rock. When you hear the gong, don't look towards the ring. <laughs> you know that's not where he's gonna be. Oh yeah, we're gonna get to that in in crazy crazy detail. Uh with that, I'm thinking about night two. 
of Mania in and of itself, and it was just uh fucking nuts. I'm like, I'm like looking at the card again. Bailey. Um, yeah, because we're not gonna talk about Jimmy versus Jay. LA Knight and Styles was great. It was good for yeah. for what it was worth. Um. Oh, the triple threat. The, yeah, yeah, but we do. I, I almost forgot. We cannot remiss. We have to talk about damage control versus Bianca, Naomi, the and big Jay. Three. <laughs> And that ridiculous Mortal Kombat Avengers level entrance that they pulled off, which was probably my second favorite entrance of the uh, of the oh. weekend, and they they looked great. It's not fair. They looked great. Um, they K. If you watch their press conference, they're just fucking like giggly girls. They're oh, impressed. So <laughs> they're like so cute. Yeah, no, they are protecting Jade as best as they can. Her first real match was at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. And she looked great. And so, That's crazy. And it, look, listen, they put her up, they put her up against the best person, Dakota, who sells like the like she's about to get die every time. Yeah, yeah. Dakota did good. <laughs> yeah, Dakota did a really good job for her. Yeah. They all did. They all sold for her really well. Kyrie sells really well as well. Yeah, Kyrie sells really well. But like, I just loved how Jade picked up Dakota, who's not like a small woman, and like walked her around the ring before finishing her off. Like it was, it was grossly absurd. But shout out to them. Uh, but yeah, no, the, the triple threat was hysterical. From KO driving Randy to the ring. Oh, yeah. My God. <laughs> what yeah. a great entrance. <laughs> KO to Randy Orton getting caught with the RKO, like almost getting, he's like, Ooh, <laughs> I did it. I did it. I fucked up. <laughs> to, to freaking, what was his name? Speed? Because I thought Speed? it was yeah, I Show Speed or something. Yeah, whatever. I, I honestly thought it was case. I'm just mad that Logan Paul just keeps getting all of his black friends hurt in WWE. <laughs> it's true. This happens like every year. <laughs> Although, if you watch the if you watch the raw audio of what Speed was saying to Randy, it's hysterical. He starts barking at Randy Orton. <laughs> it was fucking crazy. It's so funny. Like like actually barking. Like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was like he was DMX. Start. Like he was. <laughs> He's probably getting, trying to get Randy to break character. And I think that's why Randy kicked him so hard. <laughs> <laughs> stupid. <laughs> he should. If there was ever a time to do the stupid, it yeah. would have been right there. <laughs> and then, I mean, props to that guy because he sold that. Uh, he he took a really hard RKO. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's like this. He's like this really hurt. <laughs> yeah, he put a video backstage. He's like, guys, I'm in a lot of pain right now. <laughs> Like a neck brace and an ice pack. Oh my god! But Douchey Logan Paul won, which is great. And then, oh yeah, we had the Extreme Rules match with a random Bubba Ray Dudley sighting. Yeah, we popped for him too. <laughs> I was like, yeah. that match was also a hate crime. <laughs> <laughs> like when Carrion fell through the table on accident, and Montez just beats the fuck out of him with a kendo stick. <laughs> Like, you dumb motherfucker! You fucking stupid fuck! Oh my god, it was so good. And now we have. I was like, my god! Yeah, and now we have to get to arguably the greatest main event in the history of WrestleMania. Yeah. Cody Roman for the title. Um, first and foremost, because I'm a music nerd, and someone else pointed this out to me, when Cody came out in that really creative mask. And you had that music playing. It is mm-hmm. actually in the same key tone as Roman's entrance. Mm. Oh. Which is very interesting. Also, a fun fact, the mask that Cody wore, which I want one really badly, um, the s- person who made that mask also made Priest and Balor's mask from the night before. He is also the same guy who made all of Bray's masks as well. Wow. Yeah. Oh, he's That's got some documentary. Cool. Mm-hmm. That's cool. They're still giving him plenty of work. Oh yeah. Listen, did you see the mess? He's, really, he's really good. He's very talented. <laughs> yeah. he's, good at, he's good at what he does. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you had Cody come out. You had Brandy come out out of nowhere. I was like, oh, we're we're just acknowledging Brandy exists now. Okay. Oh, we popped. Yes. We even popped for Brandy. Brandy. We're like Brandy's. Brandy's like, wow. oh my god, I'm being cheered. Yeah, yeah. She, AEW this, this heel too. Not last long. <laughs> Yeah, Roman came out to a to the All City Orchestra of Philadelphia, like a bunch of high school kids did his entrance. High schoolers. Oh, I saw a TikTok of those kids being like, 
eight hours at our first WrestleMania. <laughs> they were counting down that while they were at WrestleMania. Dude, I They're would have like been the same the way. WrestleMania. You're telling me I get to perform really on the stage at WrestleMania? Hell on yeah. Event, <laughs> yeah. Too. Like, a, you're part of the main event. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I was, like, I did chorus all throughout school my whole life. If you told me that we would have sang it at WrestleMania, I would have lost my shit. Oh, my God. Yeah. I would have. That'd be the first thing that I would say to everybody that ever meant. Hey, my name's Rick. Perform at WrestleMania. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, God, I'm shocked how, like, high schools can keep their composure like that. I like, would have lost stage. my they were, shit. <laughs> oh, like, they probably saw the people, like, I'm fucking scared. Because then it hits yeah. like, oh, we have to perform, perform. <laughs> and yeah. there's how many tens of thousands? Fuck. Yeah, 72,000. At least for, I guess it's easier than if you're performing. It's easier than if you're performing alone, though. It is easier than performing like alone. Match- I, yeah, I, yeah, I did Nisma several times. That is the, that's a fate, Same. It's a fate worse than death. Okay, Ugh. it was a fate worse than that, but I perfect scored in this but once, and that still was nervous as fuck. So did I. <laughs> yeah, I'm like this kind of sucks. Grade. I think I per- yeah. I, think this it- two- I don't. Remember. I perfect scored 2005. Yeah, I, I think mine was yeah I, yeah. I, I remember. I think like because I did. I got 27, 28, and 25 was my last year. Some shit like that. Uh yeah. but anywho, yeah. No, then you had the main event, and they played all the hits. And then, and then Jimmy came out, and Jay then finally met him, and they had a better match in two minutes than they did <laughs> than it did the night before. Dude, that was like forty five seconds. <laughs> yeah. It was minutes. crazy. Yeah, the best thing about Jimmy and Jay's match from the night before was their video package was phenomenal. That was about the it, I though. am not my brother's keeper. Yeah. Oh, I loved that. I was like, oh, the match. The match was what it was. I don't remember. I don't. I don't think I paid attention. I might have been eating during that match. It was a super kick. I don't party. remember what I did. It was a it was super kick not party. A good match. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was not a good match. They only went ten minutes too, so I think they might have been cut for something. Um, yeah. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Jay tackles Jimmy off the stage. By the way, very cleverly hidden table. Because yeah. <laughs> like the <laughs> fuck did those come? Because like we we picked up on a lot of production cues. Yeah. Throughout the weekend. We were, we were right like there. That's, yeah. That's that's another thing I really enjoyed about the show, a live show, watching the production crew. They're amazing. Because they are on a schedule. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. And they're running up and down that ramp holding like a 30 pound camera. <laughs> like, we were on schedule or early. <laughs> and they're yeah. running. <laughs> they're yeah. Running. They they do a really good job. Also, not to get in the way and not to be seen. Yeah, they do a really good job of hiding. Yeah, you no, know, because I was I was I was looking for them. Yeah, but, no, they're, yeah. they're very good at hiding. Then Solo comes out. They beat the crap out of Cody. I think at one point Roman hits Cody with the crossroads. He goes, "Your," he says, "Your finisher sucks." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, so "He funny. was like, no wonder people kick out of this or something like that." <laughs> and then I was texting someone because at that point we had had the hints that like. Triple H tweeted at 316 that day. It was Roman's 1,316th day as champion. I'm like, the, the glass is shattering and this place is going to be an insane asylum. And then I was, when I was texting uh, my friend, I was like, trumpets are happening first. And they were like, what? And I was like, trumpets. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> yeah, first. trust me. And Cena came out and I was like, I became a Cena fan for like two seconds. I lost my fucking. Isn't it nice? (laughs) Isn't it nice being a Cena fan? I think it's great. John Cena fan is a lot of fun. I love being a John Cena fan. It (laughs) wasn't even him. John Cena's the best. It wasn't even him coming to the ring and taking out Solo. It was him lifting up Roman and just totally hitting an AA on him. Like, out of nowhere. That was the one thing uh, I didn't like. Because I liked how Mance booked it. No one touches Roman but Cody. Yeah. But I mean. Roman kind of had, I mean, Seth, uh, John Cena kind of had to because Roman beat him, yeah. Himself that long. And yeah. then he took out Solo, which Solo was the la- John Cena's last real full singles match. So that kind of yep. worked out. And Solo murdered the fuck out of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. Talk about hate crimes. <laughs> Solo destroyed. Hi, Boris, in the background. Um, oh, and, Papa. And then you had the Rock's music hit. And you had flashbacks oh. of 29 
and 28 in the face off in the ring. Will, how hard were you for that? Oh, very. <laughs> um, I, because it was, we were all, expect, I think a lot of people were expecting Austin. I spent at the falling the patterns. Who's, who's the Rock's number one opponent? Stone Cold. Who's yeah. available? Stone Cold. Who is Jack to the gills? Stone, Stone Cold. Cold. Yeah. <laughs> However, everyone expecting Stone Cold, but getting the Undertaker made it fucking better. Oh, yeah. No. Because it was a genuine surprise. The the gong hit. I hear Ricky just go, what? <laughs> <laughs> and me just go, just O face. <laughs> yeah. Like just losing it. The whole and once the lights go out, the place is like high school girls all over the place. Over over Clay Aiken. <laughs> like just yeah. ridiculous shit. Screeching yeah. like, of how excited we were, and then once he popped in the ring and gave that like angry grandpa face, yeah. it was just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it was ridiculous. Yeah, but it was it was one it was one of the most surreal moments of my entire uh, life. Yeah. But even before that, Kay, I need to know from you directly. Sierra Hotel, Indian Echo, Lima Delta, the Shield music hit. Oh my hit. god! Stop. Stop, Tell me your feelings. Stop. Oh my god. I like I my testament to WrestleMania. <laughs> Hi Boris. Um the biggest testament I can give to WrestleMania is I haven't had like a true emotional connection to wrestling in like a while. Mm-hmm. And I've been like very checked out. But I like openly wept several times, which is you know, true to my character. So WrestleMania was able to like I guess unlock something that hasn't been <laughs> released in a while. That being said, did Seth get a bleach job in between his match and the main event? That I don't believe so. He did look blonder. He looked he looked blonder unless they parted his hair differently. I have to like watch it back, but he looked brighter, he looked blonder. He was he Cody tired. Shields. He, was so tired. <laughs> he looked <He's> really so... <laughs> tired. That too. Imagine wrestling at WrestleMania multiple times yeah. and being a father to like a three-year-old. Yeah. For a no, second. No, thanks. For a second, I thought Seth wasn't coming alone. Because I started to like head on the swivel, like, where are they? Like, I didn't where's do Moxley? Moxley? Yeah. We all, we're all like, John Moxley? Like, no. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> like, could you imagine if they were able to like borrow him for the night? <laughs> Tony would never do that. Um, yeah. Apparently, he, they were not even consulted, which, why would you? Um, yeah. But like, but, but, no, I get it. Yeah. But then Seth pretty much getting the cartoon finish. <laughs> he just got laid out really quickly. Yeah. Because it was a, it was just a false flag because the gong hit and everybody lost it. Everybody lost Like, well, we watched the replay back because it was, they, they put it up. From when Jay shows up to when Taker shows up, it just gets louder every yeah. time. <laughs> Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. It does. And then when Cody won, it was like, it was pretty close to Taker's gong hitting. Yeah. In terms of loudness. Yeah, no, it was, oh, people, we were, everybody was having a moment. The best thing, the best thing you can watch is Logan Paul was in a skybox for yes. the main event. Oh, I watched that. <laughs> Logan Paul is all of us in that arena. <laughs> pretty much, dude. I've never felt so relatable. Like, <laughs> right? Logan Paul's like, I'm going to have a heart attack. I'm going to have a heart attack. (laughs) Oh, my God. It was was wild. And then the key point in that match is Seth is on one side. Roman's on another side. I'm not Roman. Cody's on the other side. Roman has the chair. What do you do? Do you seek revenge for something that you never got over 10 years ago? Or Or do you end Cody? And he chose revenge. And that oh. is what screwed him over. It's the one of the most beautiful stories ever. He went for the thing that he could never get over, and it ruined his future. It's a brilliant story. It's literally brilliant master level storytelling. It is, it is <laughs> levels. It's layers deep. Yeah. And Cody wins. Samantha Urban gives one of the best calls I've ever heard. 
anybody. Samantha, yeah, pe- Samantha people, Irwin was people great. Were giving her, people were giving her shit for that. And I'm like, what the fuck are you, like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> she can't, like, it's okay. She was emotional because it's an emotional moment. Like, bitch, you people are also People are mad it's a woman. Let's be real. No, they're, they, well, they said, yeah, I said it was unprofessional. Could you imagine Howard Finkel doing this? Like, no, but. But Fink probably knew better ending. than the Fink. Yeah. So, I mean, Michael Buffer, like the announcer, gave her, publicly gave her props. Like, she's fucking awesome. He, it was, I noticed it. Like, when it when it happened, I turned to you. I was like, dude, she she can't even make the announcement right now. Yeah. So the story. Like, it was wild. Yeah. Because it was like, as again, it was relatable. It was real. It was a real moment. Yeah, because the story is she doesn't like to know the finish. Of course. So she goes in blind every time. Michael Cole I usually prefers that. to go in blind, too. Yeah. So did JR. JR. JR loved to go in blind. Yeah. So she goes in blind every time, so she doesn't know what's going to happen. And and then you think about the Cody story, and Cody's a very likable person backstage. Like, there's a real connection there with Cody and everybody backstage for him. Of course. Yeah. So it, it was it was a lot of real things happening in in real time. Cody winning him like that whole scene is crazy. Um, <laughs> it's also respect for Dusty too. Yeah, it's respect for Dusty. Who who story are you finishing? Well, Cody is as well as Dusty. The cool thing, one of the other cool moments before he like gives he gets on a knee and gives his mom the title, which is kind of crazy. When he goes to the turnbuckle the first time and wants to put the title up, you can actually read his lips. He looks up in the sky and says, "Dad." Yeah. Very sweet. Yeah, and then puts the title up in the air. Um, yeah, the my favorite "fuck you, Tony" moment was CM Punk coming in the ring and raising Cody's hand. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> crying. Crying. Like CM Punk, all happy. <laughs> you let both of us go, you dipshit. <laughs> <laughs> Look what happened, you dumbass. Um. You oh, so many moments there, and then the, the craziest moment, which they they finally released a video of. Uh, Kay, I don't know if you know this story. It's a pretty infamous story. You know, Cody went to acting school. Yes, the watch. The watch, yeah. Yes, I know the story. So yeah, so I think Cody or Trips revealed it, and there's a video of it online that WWE released. Bruce Pritchard, Triple H, and the other powers that be. Found the found the found the replica of the watch, and presented it to Cody backstage once the show was over. Oh, yeah. So you, you can see that video and see his guttural reaction. He sees the box. And he automatically knows what it is. So it's not the actual watch, but it is the model. They found the model of the watch that yeah Dusty has pawned off. And if you watch Raw, Cody's wearing the watch. It's pretty crazy. There's a what. What's so funny is I noticed in the presser right away he had a different watch on because I know over the weekend there was such emphasis over the Rolexes that Cody Buffer himself mm-hmm. thinks Seth and Roman. Yeah. There's also I was like, oh, that watch is new. There was also off camera, there's a lot of videos of it. Roman breaking down at the top of the stage and Paul consoling him. I saw that too. As well. Uh it's it's listen, it's it's a crazy story. The, the overall story here of WrestleMania is that this is an install. This is a completely new regime. Triple H now has complete creative control. Vince literally put all the rest of his shares of TKO up for sale last weekend. Okay, he's 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 a non-factor. And when you do an install, you put in your people and you take out the people mm-hmm. from before. This mm-hmm. is exactly what it was. Look at all the title changes are all pretty much truly triple h guys triple h installed his regime this weekend and made it very clear and evident where his place is gonna go and as michael cole said at the end of the at the end of the broadcast damn it i love pro wrestling because they are moving away from sports entertainment terminology and is now going to be pro wrestling tony khan should be scared Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) Yeah. a a lot of wrestlemania and kind of like the presentation, how they're selling it, like from a PR standpoint, a lot of it feels like, hey, we're sorry about Vince. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is who we are now. Yeah, from like, the new opener, it, too. I was like, wow, that was quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The new I mean, opener's it, gorge. Mm-hmm. It was. Like, Ricky, that's exactly what it was. But he also kind of, like, Gunther is a Triple H guy, though. Like, a lot of these guys who are on the main roster are Triple H guys. Mm-hmm. In fact, most of them are. I don't so think... The fact that he's put... He's like putting in his men. It's 
it's accurate, but it's bizarre because he's also replacing his guys. Yeah, I mean, can I just Roman I wasn't really that Sam- much of a Triple H guy. That was Gunther more was a, Gunther was yeah. I think with Sammy in particular, like but the the, the Sam- Sammy thing is Sammy's Sam- a hardcore trips guy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sammy is yeah. a hardcore trips guy, and he's finally getting the true show and respect he deserves and the stage he deserves like bailey again is a trips person her too like i've been waiting years for sammy to be booked and treated like this yeah bailey again doing being the last horsewoman standing holding the fort down for everybody else true until they all get back yeah um it was apparently it was the story came out that the entire women's roster was waiting for bailey backstage after she won the title. Yeah, they hey, were, locker room they were veteran, locker room leader. Yeah. You know, Bailey's now probably other than Natalia. Yeah, one of she's the, the one. Longest tenured female wrestlers. Yeah. She's the one. She's the one. That's Charles's boo, by the way, Kay. Bailey. <laughs> oh yeah. He he loves Bailey. He loves Beauty with a booty. <laughs> that, yeah. That's the thing. So yeah, that's that's what WrestleMania. WrestleMania was a giant install. And one of the craziest weekends of my life, like wrestling wise, like, uh, so, so euphoric cathartic. I'm going to probably say, yeah, 10 out of 10. Well, Tara Shock, 10 out of 10. Absolutely. Yeah. A hundred percent. The whole weekend. I mean, how could it not? Yeah. Kayfabe? 10 out of 10. I, I literally was talking so much shit last two weeks ago. I'm like, yo, <laughs> I'm never going to give anything a 10. <laughs> Nothing's perfect. <laughs> and then here we are. I was wrong, and most of my predictions were wrong, and that's how you know we are in a new era, in a good era, because I'm so, I think we're all so used to how Vince booked, yeah, that they did things that we didn't expect them to do. Yeah, Raw and, and SmackDown were ruled. both excellent, too. Yeah. So Incredible! Like the, the what a great Raw after Mania. Over, like, what, SmackDown was in what, Detroit? hmm And the crowd was very loud. Yeah. Detroit's usually a very loud crowd in, in to begin with. Um, so yeah, no, it was God, what a what a weekend. What a weekend. We do have to talk about the undercard a little bit. Uh stand and deliver. Do I mean, whoop that trick. The main event was the main event. But the person that stood out to me outside of trick, uh, which I told Will, like you're gonna be surprised, Oba Femi. Yeah. How was he? A monster. <laughs> yeah. He is he is him. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> He needs some person like uh, dude. If he had, if he had Biggie's Biggie's personality, like forget it. Yeah, he, he'll get there. He's he, young. He could, like, He's young. Yet you Oba, and you had a little Tiffy time. Tiffy's also the next big thing as well. Uh, yeah. But Oba Femi. So Kay, you remember Josh Briggs? Oh yeah, of course. So in the in the triple threat, which was Oba Femi, Josh Briggs, and Dijak, by the way. Oh, Eat. forgot about him. Yeah. Oba Femi had Josh Briggs and Dijak on his shoulder at the same time. It was aggressive. And he walked around the ring with them. <laughs> it was very yeah. aggressive. Yeah. Wow. And you know what the crazy you know what the crazy thing is? He could be leaner. Like he, <laughs> yeah, he, really? he yes. has some he has some body fat yeah, on him. He could be so much leaner. Like he could get scarier. Than what he like, is. He, like he's in shape, but he's not in like top guy shape. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> but he's gonna get there. <laughs> he's gonna yeah. get there. He's so young. Wow. You see Roman's abs? How old is oh he? My God, he's fresh out of college. Probably twenty four. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's give him a goog. Let's find out what this real guy's name is. Oba Femi. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I am. I have no clue. Oba Femi was great. His name is Isaac. Nigerian name Ob I Ob Dugsbizin. Okay, so Oba Femi makes sense. Um, you had uh, what was it, Roxanne? Born ninety eight. Yeah, he's young. He's twenty six then. He's turning twenty seven next yeah. week. <laughs> well, happy early birthday. Yeah, I mean, you had Roxanne claiming her title back. Roxanne is also going to be a big star as well. She's already got the crowd behind her. Cute as a button. Cute as a button. And we had. We met the day before, and we also had Ilya Dragunov, who has one of the best suits I've ever seen. So, okay, I asked him, when I could go take a picture, I was like, so how much does that suit cost? 
<laughs> and he goes, he, he tries to give me some like message of like, you know, it's not how much it costs, it's how you look in it. I'm like, 10,000? Like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, so it's like ten, over or under 10,000. <laughs> I was like, I don't give a fuck about your message. I don't know how much that suit costs. Yeah, and it was also the cool thing about Raw after Mania is that they took that chance to bring in your champions and have matches on Raw, which I thought yeah, was, it was cool. cool. I was like, oh, fuck, Elias here? I was like, oh, this is interesting. Oh, uh-huh. it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, it was cool. It's cool. And Roxanne, but NXT Stand and Deliver, the biggest, the most, the highest attended NXT premium live event ever. More ever, ever. Yes, more wow. than any other premium live event takeovers included. I'm assuming. Um, and also, I don't. I think I revealed it on our Discord. We're getting a mid card women's title in NXT. Oh, yes, <laughs> the women's North American the women's champion. North American Championship. I was like, ah, finally, we're getting somewhere. So it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting when that shows up as well. Uh, so that's all we got, pretty much of WWE and stuff. And now let's pivot to some guy named John Moxley who won the IWGP Heavyweight Championship, beating Naito in Chicago over the weekend. Here's a fun fact for everybody: The Shield went. Five days without having a world title. (laughs) Think about that. That's crazy. (laughs) Think about that for a second. (laughs) The Shield went five days without having a world title. They've had a world title for over three years, pretty much based on Roman alone. And they went five days with none of them holding a world title. (laughs) And then Moxley won one. Okay, let that sink in. For everybody in the pro wrestling world. That is pretty fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it is absolutely wild and insane. Uh freaking Who is who is AEW champion when uh when Roman won the Universal Championship I don't in 2020? No, dude. Honestly, it could have been Mox. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been. I, I would have to look back in the books, but Moxie is your new champion, beat in Naito. Very interesting that they're putting it on him, uh, seeing NJPW did a big show in, in Chicago. Uh, so it was Omega, according to, to Quan. Yeah, that sounds um, right. So he thinks it's Omega. We'll, we'll find out. Someone someone do the research and figure it out. Uh, very interesting with this. So John Moxley is probably going to be doing double duty in Japan leading up to, to, you know, I think Dominion, I think, is coming up as well for New Japan. So probably the champion going into that. Uh, not much more to say here is that the Shield somehow always finds a way to a world title randomly. But him him doing that and obviously with the affiliation of AEW means that Mox is not going to be around. You would think AEW for a considerable amount of time while he holds this title. Uh, Fretz is saying it was a Kenny Omega. Whoops. No, Taquan is all right. So Taquan saying actually it was Mox. So yeah, they've held a title for so when they the Shield has had a world title for almost four years. <laughs> okay, well, straight, straight. Yeah, that is yeah. Pretty, that is that is absurd. <laughs> yeah. So so things to look into. Speaking of AEW, they decided that they're not going to do four pay per views anymore. They now have a total of nine. Obviously, with Revolution already happening. Dynasty, which we're going to talk about later, um, coming eight, coming this weekend, this Sunday, April 21st. You have Double or Nothing in Vegas, uh, I think Memorial Day weekend. Uh, Long Island is getting Forbidden Door at the UBS Arena at the end of June. They're going to take a month or almost two months off and go to Wembley Stadium for All In. Hopefully there's no backstage fights that get recorded and shown on TV to the detriment of your company. Uh, a week later, we're doing All Out because apparently that's what was... That that worked last time. I don't know how. Uh, Wrestle Dream back in Washington in uh, October twelfth. That's someone's birthday. Uh, Full Gear November twenty third in Newark, New Jersey. Well, that's for you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and World. No, that's, that's like Thanksgiving weekend <laughs> here. Oh, it is Thanksgiving weekend. Um, oh. and then you have World's End in in Orlando, December. Florida, at the end of December. So, uh, Kay, are you going to Forbidden Door? Um, no, I will be at Pride because Tony Khan is stupid <laughs> yes, and booked a New York yes, pay-per-view yes, the day of is. New York City Pride. Yeah, it's not the, it's not the stupidest thing Tony Khan's done this week. Let me tell you that right now. Uh, well, what are your thoughts on AEW going to a more full pay-per-view schedule? 
I think it's a good sign for them. It's a good sign for business. Well, yeah. we got to see how they buy. Like, what's the buy rate, right? That's also true. So the, the, I know it's fun to show on AEW, and I love showing on AEW, specifically <laughs> Tony Khan. But the, like, the fact that they have the confidence to add this many pay-per-views and – I guess I don't know if they have to pay the carriers, like how pay per view works. From the, I don't, the, I'm not sure. Themselves. Yeah. But like, I think it's it's also a good sign for the TV deal they desperately need. So I think Warner Brothers or whoever owns AEW is happy with the product. I think it's a good sign for their business that they have more pay per views. Um, it's just we got to see how they buy. And the biggest problem with AEW is what we've been saying it is for a long time. Tony. It's the, it's the guy, <laughs> well, then again, it's the guy who's paying for it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Without Tony Khan, this here's the thing. With Tony Khan, this company dies in like three years. Without Tony Khan, it dies in three months. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean that, that, that is the matter of it. it it's going to be interesting to see how they do with with all of this coming up. Um, it, it's still a shame that Grand Slam is not a pay per view because it damn well should be. It really should yeah. be. I was talking to the American blonde Claire um, from a couple of years ago. Claire is trying to get me to go to uh, to Grand Slam. Cause she is. She was. I was talking to her. I think one of the nights of uh, Mania, and she was like, "Oh, I should have gone. I had a chance to go, but I didn't go." I was like, "Why the fuck didn't you go?" And she was like, "She's like a Mormon. <laughs> she's like a Mormon AEW person. Like no one cares, Claire. Just show up to WrestleMania." Grand Slam. <laughs> I've gone to two out of three of them. It's so much fun. Yeah, but that instead of it's WrestleMania, I was show. like, Claire, go to fucking WrestleMania. Oh, no. Shout out to you, American Blonde. We got to get her back on the show. If I knew Dynasty was this weekend, I would have had her on for this. Uh, but be but as it may. AW Dynasty, their newest of their pay per views. Uh, we are going to do a prediction battle uh, for that and see how we do on a product that not all of us fully carry. I will tell you this uh, recently, I actually did win WrestleMania week by one point. Uh, ah. <laughs> yeah. I had 15. Well, you had 14K. You had 13. Okay. <laughs> um, so the overall scores now, Will, you are. Leading by two at 34, I'm at 32. K, you are at 29. So it, I got really right. lucky with my NXT picks. You really did. <laughs> <laughs> you really, really did. Uh, so moving on to this card, um, the match everybody should be talking about, but no one is this week. Is, is that Trick? No, it's not Trick Williams. <laughs> <laughs> it is Samoa Joe who went up against the other Rhodes on Dynamite because that was a great idea after coming up WrestleMania. <laughs> it's Samoa Joe versus Dustin Rhodes as the main event of Dynamite the week uh, the week after Mania. Uh, Samoa Joe, the AW World Heavyweight Champion versus Swerve Trick Strickland, pretty much the biggest rising star I think in AEW right now, and no one is talking about this because of some other shit that's been going on. Um, Swerve Strickland has the opportunity, and I talked about this before, Swerve Strickland has the opportunity right now to do to do something that took WWE over 50 years to accomplish and has have an African-American world heavyweight champion. And Swerve's hot right now. He's been building ever since All Out. Um... To be this to be this guy's putting on some classic matches. He's been in the championship match. He was in the triple threat with Hangman Page um, and Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe obviously ended up winning. He had a thing with Hangman Page. Hangman Page still a weird guy to me. Um, but I don't know if they do this to if they do this or they keep it on Samoa Joe. If I'm looking at it from a bigger picture perspective, as much as I want Swerve, I don't think. I don't think you take it off of Joe right now. I think Joe is your stabilizer. I think you. I think you still need a stabilizer in Samoa Joe right now. So I'm officially going with Samoa Joe. Will Tarashuk. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it depends how much you believe your own bullshit, right? Like we know. I don't like to say the guy with the belt is the leader, but like, mm-hmm. it's 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 sometimes it's just a prop. Yeah. Um, but I I I disagree with you, Ricky. I think they're gonna put it on Swerve. I think you strike while the iron's hot. Um, and from what I understand, fans of AEW, they all love Swerve. A and damn he's putting the work. He has put in the work. Like, yeah, Samoa Joe dropping the belt doesn't hurt Samoa Joe. The guy's a legend who's forever over. Whereas Swerve, it's like, okay, if not now, when? Fair. Fair statement. And why not now? Especially if you're going to try and crown a new pay-per-view, you got to have a big thing happen on a brand new pay-per-view. Yeah. And who knows what that might be? Kayfabe. So I want to believe that they're going to put it on Swerve this week, 
but I don't think they're going to put it on Swerve on a brand new pay-per-view that no one's ever heard of before. So I'm going to think I say Joe retains for a little while longer. I can see I can see Swerve winning at like double or nothing. Mm. Like put them in some kind of like give them like a fun stipulation. Let's Swerve win at, in Vegas. I can see it continuing. Might as well. It works out. All right, moving along. Next match on the card and the first controversy from AEW this week. Uh, Will Ospreay, their golden child and newest honey. Hi, Boris. Uh, (laughs) Versus Brian Danielson, who's just forever doing side quests until he retires at this point. (laughs) That's what he's doing at the moment. That is what he's doing. (laughs) So the big thing coming out of this right now is not anything about the match, obviously, it is what Will Ospreay said, the Dynamite after WrestleMania, um, in accordance to what he believed was Triple H taking a jab at him on the Pat McAfee show during WrestleMania week. So I mean, he, Triple H kind of did. He never really mentioned what did his he name. Say? So Triple H mentioned about how he's looking for talent, essentially, that wants to put in the work. And he said, if you want to take like a lighter schedule and all of this stuff, like I don't want you here essentially what he said but i think that was more generic to anybody um in my opinion like he triple h wasn't didn't seem like he was taking a jab at anybody will osprey yeah, it's 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 a jab at aew in general yeah will osprey but will osprey well will osprey was the one who said no to wwe though mm-hmm. but also will osprey in a interview with yahoo said he signed with aew for a lighter schedule true like like there's no that's on print like that's why he signed. So, like, why are you mad? Like, this is exactly what he's talking about. Um, so, Will Ospreay, in a, a, there are conflicting reports saying that he, he didn't want to do this, but Tony pushed him to do this. Will Ospreay has essentially an interview on the stage of Dynamite in Oakland position, if you may, um, with Renee Paquette, formerly Renee Young. And you can see Renee Young's face being like, you're a fucking idiot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Will Ospreay says, he's like, uh, he pretty much takes a jab at Triple H saying that he's only in the position that he's in because he was fucking the boss's daughter. Mm. Can I just say I'm so fucking overhearing about that? Mm. It was a million years ago. Yeah, they have They're married like and, and long, three kids. <laughs> they have like, yeah, like, get over it. Who cares? Getting laid worked out for someone. Okay? And... Rent-free, folks. Rent-free. Be what has it made. Danielson's taking the fall. Because Osprey's winning. You're going to give your golden child something. Yeah. That makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, I agree. That, that makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah. Next. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to move on to that. Hold on. Let me write. Let me write this down. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just like, dude, that joke would have worked 20, 20 years, years ago. ago. <laughs> yeah. But it's also like that. Why? Like, why are we joking about this? It's now? also a thing like you don't really like they could still want. You. I mean, I, Triple H doesn't seem like that vindictive of a person um, now. But like when you're Cody <laughs> literally broke a throne with a sledgehammer and look at him now. Yeah, but he didn't exactly say like, screw you, Trips. You've been banging Stephanie. Like this is a direct mm-hmm. shot of Trips. <laughs> And so you don't, like, especially with someone as young as Osprey, you don't want to burn a potential bridge to go over when it's time to go over. Mm-hmm. You know, but. Yeah, you just be like, you just, you just call and apologize. <laughs> you better hope. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you get that call back, that's the first thing you bring up. Like, listen, let's just get the elephant out of the room. Yeah. I didn't want to say that shit, you know. But whether you wanted to Vince, or not. You... Vince wanted to make out with her, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whether you wanted to or not, you still said it, and it's still on record. So that's something you do have to account for when times come, if that time ever comes. Moving on, one of the other highlight matches. Oh yeah, Okada won a title, the Continental Championship, the thing that Eddie Kingston had with like three other belts as well. Um, he's putting that championship on the line against Angry Keebler Ralph Pac because he's back too. <laughs> Pac still wrestling. Yeah. I fucking love Pa. <coughs> the on, on the bastard. On the loaded roster. Right? I I don't think I've seen Pac on TV in a while. Um, he hasn't been on TV in a while. I saw I him on Wednesday. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. hello. <laughs> yeah. So I think we can all, I think it's safe to say here, Okada's beating Pac. Yeah. 
next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, next, it's an it's an Okada win, and Pac's just there to take a lot of the really nice clotheslines. On to the biggest controversy of the week: the Young Bucks and FTR are going to fight in a tag team championship match, which has now been revealed to be a ladder match. Okay, it's going to be a ladder match. Uh, at AEW Dynasty. However, no one's talking about that because someone, Tony Khan, felt that it would be a great idea for the Young Bucks to promote this ladder match by showing the all-out footage, or the all-in footage, my fault, of CM Punk and Jack Perry backstage because that's what the segment was. It was the Bucks trying to take a jab at FTR, and then somehow in the middle of this segment, they show the backstage footage of CM Punk doing what CM Punk said he did days later. Tony Khan just validated me even further for being a CM Punk look. <laughs> like... He they he made them look say he made them himself look bad. You know, it is very rare, Kay, that the entire IWC was like, this is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That that is very bizarre. <laughs> Even like, like the Undertaker and Dave Meltzer agreed on something. <laughs> <laughs> like it was just Oh my god. Like you could see it in Tony Schiavone's face. He was having Bash of the Beach like flashbacks. <laughs> he was. Yeah. You know, I was just, I was just going to say, like, it was giving WCW, but oh, you don't WCW. bring your backstage drama and make it drama for TV. Yeah. Even if the tea's like scalding, it's not worth it. Especially when one of the people in question isn't even your fucking employee anymore. <laughs> like, how sad is it that you need an employee from somewhere else to do <laughs> your job for you? You can't draw ratings, so you need to instead use the name of someone you've released. CM Punk is still ratings. the draw of AEW. There were CM For Punk chants during that segment. Dude, forget the ratings. They're having trouble draw, drawing a house. <laughs> they can't put. I'm serious. They can't. Like they can't put butts in seats. That's their. That is their biggest problem. Yeah. They like their the wrestling's fine. Like it's not even Tony Khan isn't even the biggest problem because well Tony Khan is the biggest problem because what he's doing isn't getting butts in seats. Tony pushed for this. Yeah. So it's like a controversy want, you're trying to create cash with isn't working. Book matches. He doesn't want to. Like, not to, like, quote the Ariel Hapawati interview, but, like, he doesn't have, like, a business model in place. Like, no. he just wants he just wants to book, book matches that, like, we want to see, which is really cool and stuff. But he's doing the same shit Vince did with hoarding talent. Yeah, he thinks, like, he, he thinks he's playing WWE 2K. Good. Yeah, <laughs> like, this is people's livelihoods you're fucking with. Yeah, and it's not like the Bucks or Kenny are helping him EVP wise. Even though Kenny Omega came out and said he's a shitty EVP, <laughs> he publicly At came out and said it. Yeah, uh, but I don't even know who wins yeah, this. Yeah, because he wants to wrestle. Yeah, he wants to be a wrestler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's like I used to like yeah. the Young Bucks like a lot. Now I like I cannot. I don't fuck with them like at all anymore. Yeah, they just they they be just... they became everything they hated. Yeah, like it's cute. You super kick, okay? Yeah, they became everything. They became everything they hated, which is a shame. And that's why I'm going with FTR. <laughs> that's why I'm going with FTR. Yeah, same. For the Dude, I can't wait for the rise and fall of AEW do WWE <laughs> documentary. <laughs> Dude, it's gonna be so good. Truly, it's gonna be like I don't know what the fuck they were thinking here. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking here. I know exactly what they were thinking here. I kind of caught up with that one myself. <laughs> oh my god, are you? Going I with just like. Well, I can't wait for the, everybody that went to AEW and came back to WWE to like talk about everything. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. People made all elite podcast about it and swore off WWE. And so the AEW is the wave of the future. Well, so, okay, are you, are you going with FTR? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I also want to say before I pick my winner, the reason this got changed into a Latin match because both teams are like, I ain't eating a pin. <laughs> yeah, that's After what it was. <laughs> I, I ain't eating a pin. <laughs> so they're like, all right, fine, we'll make it a ladder match. No one eats the pin. <laughs> all right, now we're talking. That's what it is. Moving on on this card. Oh, I, I also pick FTR. I figured, yeah. Uh, we got Timeless Tony Storm, probably the most consistent character work in all of AEW next to Swerve. What a graphic. Yeah, everything's in black. They, I mean, they do the Thomas thing great and versus a returning. It's really fun. Versus a returning Thunder Rosa, who, by the way, gorgeous woman, even outside of ring. We walked past her at WrestleCon. <laughs> um, I love Thunder Rosa. I feel like she's always got like kind of a bad a bad shake of things at AEW for a while. She has a bad reputation. Yeah. She's got a yeah, she's got yeah. a bad shake, but so I you keep it on Tony. Absolutely. I agree. You keep it on Tony. Tony's your your most consistent thing going. Um I mean she looks great. Look at her. She's timeless. And why is it got why is it got like Paul Heyman behind her? And she's so funny. Yeah. Her character work has been absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Moving on. Oh, yeah, but TBS title exists. You know, the title that apparently Mercedes Monet is going after and not the world title. That's just the grep because I'm a stan. Um, but Julia Hart is going after, is uh, defending her title against Willow Nightingale, who I think we believe Willow was the one who took out Mercedes backstage uh, this past week on Dynamite. So the first question and the first bonus question of Dynamite, because I made these out of my ass a couple of hours ago. Do we get a Mercedes Monet signing at Dynasty? Yes. Yes. I will also say yes. Stare down. I like it. Mm-hmm. You, you've also convinced me. With the stare down, I think Willow beats Julia. I agree. Willow, a Long Island product, too, by the way. Yeah, Willow's from NYWC. She's great. What does she create a pro, too? No, NYWC. Oh, good for her. I'm going with Willow. Gotta, you know, yeah, she. Long on people gotta stick together. Will, are you also going yeah. to Willow? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be. Will's just, just trying to. Will's not? just trying to keep his his championship reign right now. Will's trying to keep the. Yeah, lead. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this picture of Roman Reigns at <laughs> what Mr. Wild P put in his Discord. Yeah. Was he? Cut yeah, up? dude. It's 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 Roman Reigns out here surrounded by gold bars and baddies. Oh. My God! Oh goodness gracious! From Kiki Palmer Snapchat. Oh, it's Ki- oh, it's Kiki Palmer. That's why. <laughs> That's why. All right, moving on. Let's we stop oogling over Roman. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's 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 just a very weird picture. That's a very at. nice suit. Yeah. I'm just saying. It's the Will Tarashock special, but that's the AEW International Championship. <laughs> the Intercontinental Title. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Roderick. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yes. When did Kyle O'Reilly come back? A couple weeks ago. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Okay. You have Roderick Strong versus Cool Kyle O'Reilly. <laughs> <laughs> cool Kyle was the worst. <laughs> I was like, wow, dude, you really need Adam. O- you really need Adam Cole to get I'm just going to pencil Roderick Strong in for you, Will, because you'll never pick Kyle O'Reilly. <laughs> yeah, dude, I can never pick Kyle, Cool Kyle for anything. <laughs> I have no idea where this is going. I totally forgot the international title exists as soon as they took it off of uh, Orange Cassidy, to be honest with you. The intercontinental <laughs> title. Well, we have the international and they have the continental championship. At- yeah, it's the intercontinental. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with Roddy, even though Roddy kind of really looked. If you look at this graphic in a way, Roddy kind of looks like an angry white guy from the South, like almost Civil War period. He yeah, he, he needs he needs to grow his mustache a little, a little bit. Like, dude, why does he have a Hitler stash? No, he's got the shadow. He's got the beard a little. Yeah, the, the, that upper lip looks oddly oddly spe- uh, specific. It, yeah. I, 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 I see that as well. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can have shadow, but dude, if you have just this on your lip, that's a problem. That's <laughs> why I, I said you're gonna have a full, you have like a Mao goatee. I don't care. That upper lip is a problem. <laughs> Yes, okay, are you also going with Roderick? I guess. Yeah, I'd go with Roddy. Sure. Messiah the Backbreaker, former former legend of ROH, and now doing stuff with Kyle O'Reilly. Who the fuck knows? Anywho, final match on this card. Trios match. Oh yeah, there's another title that someone holds from from person who made his who made his uh billings 
in another company. Adam Copeland, formerly known as Edge, but TNT Championship, because that's still a thing. I can't wait till they go full streaming and those TNT and TBS styles become worthless. Um, versus Eddie Kingston and Mark Briscoe. I mean, Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, Mark Briscoe, all champions of all various different things. I think Mark just won the ROH World title from Eddie, and Eddie only now has the NJPW Strong Championship when he formerly held three titles um, versus the House of Black. Because there are things, though. Trios match. I'm going to go with team people who aren't on House of Black. Uh, I'll go with Edge. Yeah. Edge, Eddie, Mark Briscoe. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Kay, are you going House of Black? You're going to still support the Alistair? Okay, so I'm trying to think about it. Mm-hmm. Um... Because, like, I, like, want to support House of Black. What I'm trying to figure out is House of Black all going to fall at this pay-per-view. Ooh, good question. Like if, um, so, I guess, I guess I'll go Team Edge and company. Okay. But I'm not, like, certain. I don't know. I don't feel good about my choice, but... <laughs> Well, is this your final answer? You're going to stick to this. Yeah, I'm sticking to my answer. I'm just curious to see what the deal with House of Black is going to be. Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting. I mean, wasn't Julia Hart part of House of Black for a little bit? Yeah, no, she still is, which is why I'm wondering, like, everybody falls. If Julia, if everyone drops at Dynasty. That would make the most sense, you know, just have them scatter a little bit. And I'm also wondering when everyone's contracts are up. Since House of Black are friends with CM Punk and such. <laughs> That's the other thing I'm curious about. Like, I wonder if Malachi Black is going to go back to WWE. I mean, it'd probably help out him and Zelina. Yeah. And Buddy could go back to beat Rhea. Nah, Buddy can, Buddy can stay where he's at. <laughs> Buddy <laughs> can stay. <laughs> Buddy can stay where he's at. Oh, well, I miss Buddy. Buddy Murphy was a great performer. Um, he's really good. He's really talented in this time there. Well, if you watch AEW, you can see him continue to be a great performer. I am up on Wednesday, so I'm probably going to start reading the Scarlet Letter based on a recommendation. Anywho. Oh. You've never read the Scarlet Letter? No, I have. I'm rereading it. It's part of the, It's part of my series oh. of why the fuck do I still have these books? Let's read them again series. Um, Ooh. So, because I just finished Marvel's What If uh, What If Loki Was Worthy. Fantastic, by the way. Okay, highly recommend. Um, but be it as it may, that is the last of the AEW Dynasty. It's an eight. It's eight matches. Well, it's under double digit matches. Oh, thank so God! Maybe they're learning. Maybe they're learning something. <laughs> so with that being said, let's go around the board. So I don't UK fame. How many crowns will this first ever AEW pay per view be? One being the worst thing in the world. Ten being the greatest thing of all time. Or essentially WrestleMania forty. K fame. What do you got? I'm going to do a six and a half. That sounds pretty fair to me. <laughs> well, <Tara Shock. laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to undercut you six flat. I'm not going to watch it though. So who cares? I'll stay with you. Kay. I think I'm going to go six and a half as, as well. Uh, with mania. I don't know. Mania has like shifted. It's a new standard it's now. now. It's a, it's a very big new standard. Oh, man, we got backlash uh, in like two weeks. From there as well. Also, two more bonuses. Uh, Cause since it's an AEW card, two more bonus questions. Uh, number one, which is probably going to be unanimous. Do we get CM Punk chance? Yeah, <laughs> obviously. Especially during the... 100%. <laughs> that ladder match is going to be all CM Punk chance. Because Marks will ruin their own thing just for the sake of a fucking joke. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, Marks will ruin, Marks will bury the parts because it's funny. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. That's over. what it is. Um, almost as bad as that guy who tried to get a picture in front of Jey Uso during last night's Raw. Oh my! Did you God. see that? I haven't watched Raw. I haven't. Watched I'll tell yeah, you about it. Was it. Weird. So no, they will from production standpoint, you'll love it. They did a one. They did a massive oneer. So Jay had his match. He went out. He went out through the crowd and went up the arena. And so he's going through the he's going through the arena corridor. Like just he's just walking around and people like high fiving him. Mm-hmm. Some 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 douche gets in front of him and tries to take a selfie and Jay pushes him out of the way. <laughs> <Amazing>. <laughs> just launches him. Then he goes outside where Sammy's standing outside of the arena 
and because Sammy main evented, and Sammy's like, yeah. Sammy's like, I you know I was here. Sammy's first wrestling event was was the Montreal Screw Job. No fucking way. <laughs> yeah. Really? And that apparently inspired him to be a pro wrestler. <laughs> wow. <laughs> At least two things good come out of that event. <laughs> so they did a one cut. So Jay meets Sammy. And Sammy's like, I'm going to go into this main event the same way I came in 20 some odd years ago through the front door. So they one shot Sammy going into the arena oh, in through yo. the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> oh, production value. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. it. It is. It is absolutely fantastic. Uh, but the other thing as well, the last thing, plus or minus two, how many matches out of his eight cards uh, match will have blood? Oh, shit. Plus or minus two, mm. by the um, way, so you can... Matches, not participants. Matches, yeah, not participants. Oh, man. Can I go two flat? I'm going two as well. I'm going to say three. Ooh. Oh, no, it's because it's plus or minus plus two. Or minus I'm going to go three as well. Yeah, three. You know, fuck, I might go f- now three. Three is a good number. I'm gonna. I should go four, but I'm not. Six is too many. Yeah. I'm gonna say Young Bucks match, Briscoe match, and um, Pack. Really? Okay, I can see that. Pack bleeds from a clothesline. <laughs> I can see that. So yeah, <laughs> Black bleeds from a clothesline. That's, that's a rainmaker, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God, those biceps. Anywho, folks, that concludes our show. We got this in under two hours, actually. Actually, good for us. Uh, yeah, buck 45. Yeah, we're doing good. good. We, good. Good. we, we good hit time. most of the highlights um, for the most part. Yeah. So, again, this is our first of our permanently on Tuesday shows. First officially permanently on Tuesday shows in the new era of KOTR. The one where Kayfabe is here in, her judgment, in their <laughs> judgment day. Uh, attire and stuff. Well, every week it may be different. I need you to, never know what fashion. I need doing you to get week. more emo Judgment Day every week. <laughs> like wear more eyeliner. Yeah, progressively just have each it start week. to bleed down like, each week. Like Alistair like Malachi Black has been doing. Yeah, have it do. I'll like get that. black extensions like Rhea. Mm-hmm. I will tell you yeah, this okay. next week, since it's going to be the week before the official WWE draft. We are going to go drafting again. We're going to have a fun show next yes. week. Oh, hell yeah. We are yeah. going to go I drafting. And draft. especially since somebody probably took our final advice, and maybe this is also part of Triple H's new regime and installment. I don't know if you're aware, but they've made it pretty clear and evident. NXT is a part of a draft this year. Third brand, baby. The third brand is back. <laughs> so no more developmental NXT. This is third brand NXT, just like Papa Trips wanted it to be. So it's very interesting to yeah. see. Yeah. So uh, the it's it's very and they also dropped the Universal. Yes, it's world it's world championship. Yeah. Yeah, it's WWE World Champion yeah. or WWE Champion. It's WWE Champion and World Champion. Sorry. Um, yeah. It's it's very interesting how they dropped the Universal. Yeah, so, I guess because that was Bray's belt. That, that as well. And also, when they merge it together, it's a really, really long fucking title. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yes, one of us, I don't know how I'm going to do it. We'll probably do something at random like we did last time. One of us will have NXT. One of us will have Raw. One of us will have SmackDown. And maybe and we'll everybody will be up for grabs for the most part. We'll do at least 10 or so slots at a minimum. We'll see. I'll figure it out. Yeah, didn't, I, didn't I draft? Who is that guy from NXT that I liked? The, I still uh, have it somewhere. I got to look it up for you. It was like it was like Goldust and Viscera <laughs> as one person. Oh, um, uh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, what's his name? Okay, you know you would know this person. Something Elliot. Something like, it was like someone with an O. Some, something who? Something Elliot. Or something Elliot. He did he did Halloween Happen with Shotzi. Odyssey, not, jo- not, not Odyssey, Odyssey Jones. Not Odyssey Jones. Not Odyssey Jones. Dexter Quincy, 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 Quincy Elliot. Quincy, Quincy Elliot. Quincy Elliot. Quincy Elliott. Quincy Elliott. I drafted him last year. Thank you. He did not last long. Oh, at all. We can get some backstage. I still think it was a good draft. (laughs) (laughs) Quincy had Quincy had his had a thing going on, but yeah, no. That's it. We're gonna we're gonna go draft it next week. It's gonna be a fun time, and maybe we'll talk about whatever nonsense happened on AEW. But that's pretty much it. So that being said, Will. Hell yeah.
ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 372, Dynasty Roads. It is a new dynasty, or maybe an older new dynasty in WWE under the Paul Levesque era. And it's a new era of Kings of the Rings podcast, now officially live streaming on Tuesday nights on YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. I have been your host, King Ricky Rose. You can find me at Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlets, B-I-G-Z, Ambassador Biggs. Find Kings of the Rings podcast at KOTR underscore podcast across all social media outlets. Like, share, subscribe, leave us five-star reviews. The links to all of that are in the description below. If you are listening to us, you are listening to us on Wrestle Addict Radio, the cure for the common wrestling podcast. And follow Wrestle Addict Radio's socials at addict underscore wrestle on Twitter and Wrestle Addict Radio, all one word, everywhere else. Links to all of that are in the description below. I'm so happy to have all three of us back on a more consistent basis. Not you, Will, but happy to have you back, Caleb. Will. I see I miss too you. often now. I, I, miss, I miss you too, big guy. I miss you too. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, WrestleMania weekend was one of the best. I mean, it's hard to top New Orleans, but it became pretty damn close. And Ricky, thank you for being our travel agent, our driver. <laughs> Yeah, and I even just, I even locked in us going seeing Godzilla and King Kong. Yes, <laughs> and wow. and like our planner. Okay, I swear to God, like I didn't need to do anything. <laughs> I was just like, Ricky. Follow. Honestly, Ricky gives me that vibe, like type A itinerary friend. Dude, yeah, the man me. just knows how to plan a vacation. It was really like, dude, <laughs> Ricky was like this close to parting the Delaware River. He's gonna walk across it. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how much I was following Ricky. So thank you for all your You're work welcome, and sir. doing all the research and getting us deals on tickets. Uh, we oh, could not, yeah. we could not do it without you. It was unbelievable how much money I didn't spend. <laughs> <laughs> Kay Murphy, as long as if it's close next year, the three of us are going. Oh, absolutely. I one million percent hope to go again in the in the future. If it's Atlanta, we can just but... party with Charles. Dude, I hope it's in Atlanta. <laughs> I really do. I I feel like in Atlanta Mania it would be absolutely fucking crazy. Yeah, no Snooky this time. No Snooky this time. Um, but you know, instead of going to WrestleMania this year, I got a dog. And it was very nice to watch WrestleMania with a puppy in my pajamas, smoking as much weed as I wanted. <laughs> so You could have smoked in the Philly. I, you know care. I know I could have, but I got I had the time of my life. I got to spend it with great friends, delicious snacks, and I didn't get stuck in line in traffic. None of it. Yeah, lucky uh, you. You can find. Thank God. <laughs> you can find me on Instagram and TikTok at k underscore fabe, and I'm ready to go to bed. Um, yeah, me too. Of course me too. you are. So you know we're gonna just gonna cut it short this week. No, 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 no. Um, no post show this week. We we gotta wrap it up. We gotta recover. We're getting old now, but we got we gotta recover a little bit. It's also ten o'clock. We got shit to do in the morning. I think. Uh, so mm-hmm. next week, folks, it is going to be v twenty twenty four K O T R draft. We are going to rebrand WWE and the brands in our own image the way that we see fit more details on that next week so until then folks goodbye good night we'll see you soon and new era same douchebag fuck you slack (laughs) 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 see you later folks next week is mr fretz's birthday oh yeah happy birthday fretz see you next week oh yeah this has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.